Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, financial literacy apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today we're talking about financial literacy apps and uh, there are quite a few actually and they are very important to teach kids about uh, financial things and we'll start with younger kids and one of the things we do with younger kids is talk about needs versus wants so if we go to my iPad you can see that I have a, an app that does exactly that now the one strange thing about this app is you have to select what a credit union you belong to but it'll let you through whether you belong to that credit union or not and what I love about this app it asks for no personal information and all it does is it goes through a series of exercises where kids are supposed to separate their needs instance, and their I'd wants like to have a candy bar. so but in I this game Joe the monkey but leads us through making choices about what you need and what you want and there are different screens and different scenarios where you have to make I these need decisions your help to figure out the difference between needs and wants please put the things I need into the sack so right now it asks us to put the right things that are needs into the sack so we can oh, put the house nice and Jack, almost try again close good Food. so you can That's see right. that it allows you only to put the things that are needs and it stays away from the wants and it just gives you a short warning and it tells you to try again and then it goes through multiple levels sometimes you're being asked to purchase specific things and not what you uh, potentially would like I'm getting ready for school. So here's another Not example sure and you get the food. idea. The monkey you walks us through multiple games and allows us to do this. At the end of every two uh, phases, Coke, um, you cold. get Perfect. to play a game, it's a memory game. Now, the thing that I like oh, about it, because course. I'm not a big fan you of just it. playing for the sake of playing, is you can easily Excellent just job. skip that game. So you see, here's the game. This round. Match the pictures on two cards. Good luck! And it's a nice little uh, memory game, and if you, you don't mind kids playing it, that's fine, but if not, you can just ask them My to skip and they're going to the next level. So this one is needs versus want. The next one I want to talk about is called uh, NYC Money Smart, and this one was made to help um, older kids learn about money, uh, mostly young adults at the middle school and high school level and what you can do here is you can test your money smart so it gives you a series of questions on saving on spending and things like that so let's take a test about a uh, saving um, and this is simple simple questions the answers are kind of obvious what I like le less than the answers is of course that you get some feedback and then you get an explanation and I think that that the real unique feature of this app is that it gives quite a bit of information about that uh, approach and that allows you really to get a little bit more into depth about why was it the right approach so let's go to the next question and uh, we, an we give a wrong answer and it says it's incorrect and you say okay and then it explains again it explains to you and it also shows you how many people uh, answered the way you answered so it shows you how many people chose true even though that statement was false and then you've got terms and you can actually get some information about specific financial terms so you can see that this integrates that idea of taking a quiz uh, not for points but actually to learn something with additional layers of information in it so this is NYC Money Smarts the next app I want to talk about is, uh, is called Beeztopia and Beeztopia is a very different app. It teaches kids about the different costs that go into the making of a business. So in this game you get to run a store and you have to decide on everything that goes into that store. That goes from I think a upper elementary middle school level and up and you have to purchase products so you go to your wholesaler and you say I want to purchase this and when you when you look at something you can see 
how, many, how much of that is available in the stores, what's the estimated profit, how much does it cost, how much money you have in the bank. In this case, I have a negative amount in the bank because I already played and bought some other products, but you can buy products. You can then go, so I'll go and I'll buy, and you can say how many you want, and I bought, and they're out of that product, and now I have some product in my store, I can buy more, um, maximum that I can, and now my store is full, it's 100 out of 100. And the next thing that I do is set a price, and after that I can go to my bank, I can go and have a marketing account where I decide what kind of, uh, what kind of marketing I want. Do I want flyers, do I want radio, television? Of course, there's a cost to that, there's a cost to labor, and there are implications for everything you do. So if you pay more for labor, they're happier, they give better service, but they're also costing more money. And that kind of a balancing things happen, and then you can move things. And as you move along, you can see that you are ranked with other uh, machine-based players in this case. And so you can see that um, I have fairly little profit, but I'm still uh, in the black, which is great. Uh, it gives you the winning point. You need to earn five million B dollars. Uh, it tells you how good you are about being uh, wealthy in this case. How much? How many sales did you make? And I made one hundred and seven uh, thousand in sales, which is a lot better than my first try. And then you get the money, you can see how much you earn versus your overhead. So there are a lot of concepts about running a business that actually go into this and you can play for multiple weeks. So kids can play this and I would argue you can send them home to play this. Uh, it is free and they can uh, then report about what they learned about running a business, what works and what doesn't work. And this can lead to a really interesting discussion. So I love this game, Beastopia. It's something I do play with my kids and I think that it's a good way to get a sense of what it takes to run a business. The last app I want to present is called Piggybot. This is originally an app for parents, but I think we can actually do this in the classroom with classroom dollars, so not real money. And the idea is that you have a pay allowance and you have a file for each one of uh, the kids and then kids can go in and they have a secret code to go in and then they can choose to spend money they have. So I set this at $4 a week. So they can just say, I'm going to share $4, I'm going to save $4 and I'm going to spend $4. And this is a, a good mix and this is one of the things that comes up a lot in financial literacy for kids, making sure that you get to spend some money, not just saving, you get to save and you get to share or give to charity, uh, however you want to call it. And now you can have the goal of things you want to buy. So if you, for example, want to buy a car, a, a toy car, of course, uh, let's make sure it's clear, and then that thing costs $21. Now you can have the kids know what goal they're working towards. So now I have a, a new goal. And you can work through it, and let me show you a, another one. Um, this is so you can have multiple children on this, which means you can have your whole classroom. And you can see that he has a goal. So he knows where he is. He's got zero dollars right now, but you can see actually the progress. So he can save enough to spend on this goal. So today, on iPads in the Classroom, we talked about apps for different ages to teach different aspects of financial literacy. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom. <laughs>